All right, hello, Econ people. Here to finish up what we started in class the other day and talk to you a little bit more about the production possibilities curve. So first, let's cover production possibilities curve and efficiency. Um, we haven't talked about efficiency yet, so you're going to become more and more familiar with these two different terms, two different types of efficiency. There's uh, productive efficiency, which is very simple. Uh, products are being produced in the least costly way. There's no unemployment. Um, as you'll see when you watch the Paul Salman uh, production possibilities curve videos online, um, there's, uh, it makes very clear the point about unemployment, so it's producing at a point that's on the PPC. Um, this is very simple. You should get this pretty much right away, and uh, if it's on the line, it's productively efficient, meaning that we're using all of our resources. Allocative efficiency is a little bit different. Um, right now, uh, at the beginning of the course, we don't have a great way to measure allocative efficiency. We will a little bit later on when we, uh, when we introduce the supply and demand model. Um, so when we say allocatively efficient, we mean that we're producing the right combination um, the, uh, as it says here, optimal point on the PPC depends upon the desires of society. And how do we measure the desires of society? Well, we can as economists, but we can't yet. Um, so we'll get there. Um, so just so you know, allocatively efficient is, uh, is something that could be on the line, although, say, for example, in this one, points A, B, C, and D could be allocatively efficient. Um, and all of them are productively efficient. So productively efficient, all of them, um, any of those things could be allocatively efficient that are on the PPC. Um, like, for example, if uh, there was a country with no electricity, as it says here, there would be no reason to have computers because you couldn't plug them in. Um, here's another example, right? So combination A, is it efficient? Well, we need to break it down into our two different kinds of efficiency. So yes and no. It is productively efficient because it's right there on the line, but common sense leads us to believe that we're not going to want to produce all size 20 running shoes or almost all size 20 running shoes because people with size 20 feet are pretty rare. In fact, I don't think I've ever met anyone with a size 20 foot. Uh, so point uh, allocative efficient point would probably be a little bit more towards the size 10 running shoes, but again, we don't yet have the ability to measure that. Um, so simply put, and what you need to know for now is that allocative efficient is what is optimal for society. Um, and we'll leave it at that. All right, so now the next thing that we need to cover and to finish up on is shifting the production possibilities curve. Um, so our four key assumptions here, those uh, ones in green there are in bold text and highlighted because those are the ones that we're going to play with um, when we talk about shifting a PPC. All right, so if there's a change, there could be a change in the resource quality or quantity. Um, there could be a change in technology. And there can also be a change in trade. Uh, trade wasn't one of our four key assumptions, and we'll, we'll investigate that a little bit more in class on Monday. Okay, so if we have our pizza and robot example here, um, what do you suppose might happen if there's an increase in population? And feel free to pause it um, so you can answer the questions. So if, uh, if there's an increase in population, you should see both going up, something like that. Right? There's more labor available for uh, producing both robots and pizzas. So now how might you adjust this PPC if there is a technology improvement in pizza ovens? Will that impact the amount of pizzas we can make? Will that impact the amount of robots we can make? Think about it for a second. What you should have come up with is a shift out just for pizzas. So it doesn't change the amount of robots that we can make, but it does shift out the amount of pizzas we can make. <laughs> Lastly, uh, here in terms of growth, this is, there's an important point to note between capital goods and future growth. So we have two examples of Latin American countries. So we, let's just take a kind of Panama and Mexico. Um, not that this is the actual case between Panama and Mexico, but anyhow. So if this is the current PPC for Panama, and that's the point at which they're consuming. So they are uh, producing and consuming this level of consumer goods and this level of capital goods. So way more consumer goods proportionally than capital goods. 
And then if we have the future PPC, we could see some growth in that. There will be some production of new tools and new machines. Um, capital goods could uh, also represent the ability to increase human capital. So we will see p future PPC growth say something like that. Over here in Mexico, we have the start off with the same initial PPC. And if we produce more capital goods proportionally than the consumer goods, we'll see much larger growth in future PPC. Um, the, the reason for this is, is pretty simple. When you produce a consumer good, you consume it, essentially. It's a, a good or a service that is used up and then is gone. Right? It's a hamburger and I ate it. It is a pencil and I used it up. Um, with a capital good, it's something that stays around a little bit, a little while longer. Say it's a, a tool, a, a factory equipment, or you know, a truck to move stuff around, and kind of things that are more like the bones of economic growth. Um, so we see larger growth potential when we focus on making capital goods. So if we have more tools, more equipment, more machinery around, um, with which more people can be more productive we're going to see bigger growth in PPC, rather than if we just focus on making stuff that we're going to eat up and then not have anymore. And there's that point put in short. And here's some practice. So uh, with all of these practice scenarios, what you should do is, uh, oopsie, you should pause the uh, recording and uh, take as long as you need and then play the recording when we look at the answers. So if we have three examples here in the pizza and robots. So what I want you to do is draw a PPC and then draw how you think it's going to shift. So a pizza and robot PPC. So number one, if there's new robot making technology. Number two, if there's a decrease in the demand for pizza. Number three, if mad cow disease kills 85% of cows. So remember, the production possibilities are just how much we can make and consume of each of these two goods. And let's uh, take four more examples from consumer and capital goods. Um, there's a BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico it leads to a fuel shortage. Faster computer hardware is invented. Um, many workers are unemployed. And significant increases in education. So what are the changes that you're going to see um, on these PPCs? And the answers. So number one should look like that. Number two. A decrease in the demand does not shift the line. It just changes the priority. It's a, a movement along the PPC because it's a change in society's preferences. Remember earlier we talked about allocative efficiency? So a decrease in the demand for pizza will change the societally optimal level of pizza. So the societally optimal level of pizza goes from whatever this level is here down to whatever this level is here. So it's a movement along the PPC. Number three, mad cow disease. You'll see a shift in for pizza. It doesn't take a cow or any kind of cow product to make a robot. So mad cow disease killing cows doesn't directly impact our uh, ability to produce robots in this kind of simple world. Um, but it does greatly impact pizza because pizza is highly dependent upon cheese and uh, perhaps other beef-based toppings. Question four, now we're on to capital goods and consumer goods. So BP oil spill in the Gulf reduces the amount of fuel available, which decreases production possibilities for both. Fuel is needed to produce capital goods and consumer goods. Faster computer hardware is invented. So an improved quality of this resource, uh, computers can be used in producing both consumer goods and capital goods. The entire curve shifts out. Question six, many workers are unemployed. Remember, unemployment isn't a move in the curve, it's a point inside of the curve. Question seven, last one, significant increases in education, the growth of human capital, which will be an increased quality of a resource, and the whole curve shifts out. 
I want you to make sure to take a look at the Paul Salman Production Possibilities videos uh, uploaded to my School Loop website. Thank you.